I have been racking my brain today over this Elliott Wave count, and I feel like I have a pretty decent uh, handle on the count, I believe. So I want to share it with you. It's a bull count. takes us up to about $180. I want to share it to you and uh, show you the potential that we have coming up in Litecoin. So I hope you're hanging around with me and uh, enjoying your Sunday afternoon. I have sure been enjoying mine as well. It's a beautiful day where I am and uh, where in the state that I live in. And so uh, it's beautiful. All right. Well, let's look at the uh, let's look at the count. I want to talk about uh, some potential entry places for you, as well as uh, help you understand uh, uh, what I mean when I say don't FOMO in. It doesn't mean don't get in the market at all. And so this is for a couple people. I mentioned I was going to uh, give a part, uh, give uh, some specific things for you. Uh, in the video, this is for you. Okay. Uh, if you're not part of our Litecoin swing trading community, I want to invite you in on that um, let's see if there we go if you just follow come to Facebook find Litecoin swing trading community we have a great community of traders uh, we've got uh, two of us that offer videos uh, on a daily basis and we offer our price targets as well we've got a good community of traders I have a discord as well I just started we're working on becoming active I'm not there yet um, but uh, my children are playing with the water outside so if you hear them that's what you're hearing um, but um, yeah, we have a Discord that I just started as well. Um, you can come and find the uh, Gym of All Trades Discord, and uh, in there you will find uh, a bunch of traders as well, uh, offering charts and talking trades and whatnot. So we invite you to the Discord if you're not a part of that as well. Uh, we were working on getting that active. It was just created just several days ago, and so I want to uh, invite you there. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, finally, this is our group of guys right here in our Discord. We invite you here as well. All right. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. There's a disclaimer. Let's jump into the charts. All right, uh, we're looking at Litecoin right now, and uh, I love to I love to trade Litecoin. I use the Bitcoin chart to help, uh, but I like trading Litecoin. Uh, it just moves uh, it just moves so much more vol volatilely and predictably, in my opinion, uh, than uh, Bitcoin does. Even though sometimes we miss the moves, I just like the movement of Litecoin pretty well, and I trade it. It's just my uh, it's also my uh, crypto. Um, my, my crypto of choice, I believe it's going to be one of the first used in the actual marketplace uh, for a fast transaction. So, hey, um, we're hoping uh, that Litecoin investment will turn out too. Man, I have my eyes, I have my eyes set on a thousand dollar Litecoin one day. So, um, I hope to, I hope to see it there in the next year or two. That'd be, that'd be amazing. Hope, I hope you think that'd be a pretty amazing as well. All right, let's, uh, let's look at what we have here. We've got a one, uh, two wave followed by a three and a four. I think that's fairly clear. Uh, the fibs support that as well as um, as well as just the wave structure. That means what we're making here uh, is an extended fifth wave. Now I did some reading today. I did a little reading just checking up on my Elliott Wave rules and guidelines and and let me just read you a line here. It says the fifth wave, it's, if it's the longest, and I believe this is going to be the longest wave, typically travels one the 1.618 uh, that means one time, one plus sixty percent more than the distance from the start of wave one through the end of wave three. So if we throw our Fibonacci uh, extension tool here on the um, the one wave, and we extend it uh, from, oh, let me try that again because I didn't do that right. Uh, we go from the bottom of the one to the top of three, I should say, right there. We'll see an extension. Uh, of the 1618 is right up here near the structure line of 180, 181. I think it's 193, this says. So there's a potential target up here uh, for the 193 to the 181 to the 193 mark. This purple line you see is a structure line that I carried over from the top of this peak right here. Okay, so that's about 181.40, 182.78 is what I have that at now. So in that ballpark, um, so between 182 and uh, 193 are the potential counts there. Now that means if this is the longest wave, we need to try to find a sub count for it. And you can see I have a bunch of uh, numbers all over that. So let's see if we can figure out that count. I'm going to zoom in here to the uh, to the three hour chart and show you the major sub counts I'm seeing. Um, now what I did is I spent some time measuring and I wasn't going to just do all this in front of you just so that you wouldn't have to see it. But I believe we've made the, uh, that from here to here is a one wave and you can see five waves. Um, I'm going to go in uh, I'm going to go into the uh, two hour chart um, and uh, show you a little closer here um, right here. I'm, I'm seeing five completed waves right in here. I did measure this. This comes to the 1618. So this is one, two, three, four, five. That makes our one wave followed by the two. 
Then we have uh, we are currently in the third wave. Now, if I put the fibs on that guy from the one uh, to the two, uh, you can see that the uh, six one eight up here, the third wave. Let me get this a little bit more precise here. We have a target up here of about um, 155 in that ballpark. This is 154. Um, so 154.13 is, is the FIB level. It always it generally extends through it a little bit. So uh, it looks like we have a 1, 2, I uh, got a three wave followed by a four, and then we got an extended fifth here as well. That means if we have an extended fifth, it should extend uh, from the one to the three. It should extend to the 1618. And look at where the 1618 comes. 1618 is up here at 160. So there's a little bit of confluence there as well. Uh, so we have a potential target up here at about the 155 to 160 mark uh, for this third wave to finish. Okay? So if that's correct, and that's a big giant if, guys, if that's correct, we've got a 1, 2, this is 3, 4, and we're making the fifth wave of the third wave. Okay, so remember this is a uh, this is the large fit. This is the see up here the the larger degree. Um, actually, not let me let me. Here's the larger degree five. That's what this wave is right here. We're making one two. We're making the third wave. We got a the fourth wave correction, and then we're going to come down uh, come up for the fifth wave somewhere up in the uh, 180 mark. So that's that's what I'm thinking. This is the count. If this is the case. Um, uh, if this is the case, then uh, let's subcount this final fifth wave of the third wave and see what we can come up with there. So let's go to the 30-minute chart and uh, zoom in on that count as well. And so uh, you can see I've already marked uh, our waves here. Um, uh, let's throw the fibs on it just just for kicks here. We've got a one wave followed by a two. Okay. Um, Uh, here's where it's tough. This, this three wave didn't come up to the 1618, but it does, there's nothing that says it has to. Uh, this might be not. This might not be delineated perfectly. Um, this might be the one two, and then this might be the three. In fact, if this is the one two, uh, sorry. Um, so sometimes when the fibs don't come out quite right, I, I ask the question: Do I have that marked right? Um, and that seems awful high there. Yeah, I, I kind of think that uh, my marking is right here. I've got uh, one, uh, one, two, three, four, and we're coming up for five. That's potential count. Uh, I'm not so certain about it, but it sure looks pretty good. This four respected the one very well, uh, and, and it just looks good. Looks like good subdivision. Looks like we're going to have an extended fifth wave as well, potentially. Uh, if that's the case, we're going to go from one to three to project that 1618 uh, of the of the extended fifth uh, 1618 comes up to uh, it's too high that's not good uh, that's probably not going to be extended fifth it's probably going to come to the 618 which is uh, the fit right there at the $54 mark there's confluence there so yeah we're probably not going to have an extended fifth here but we'll see we'll see what happens so uh, what are we looking at what are we looking at um, well, this is where where we're in involved now. It's really hard to tell. Um, but if this is the fifth wave, looking for uh, this to move up uh, up here to the 155 mark uh, in that ballpark. Okay. All right. So that's what I'm kind of waiting on and looking at. Uh, might come up even here to 160. Um, in fact, I believe there's a structure zone at 160, if I remember right. Let me go back and mark that uh, on this chart um, just so we can see it. I believe it was 161 that makes more sense uh, there's 127 140 153 156 165 60 so yeah I thought it was 161 but it's right here so we have structure there this uh, tool sometimes trading view is a real pain in the rear end we got structure here 
156.92 to 165.83. So there's some targets there for us along with our FIB levels as well. So that's what I'm kind of looking for. So uh, let's zoom in now to this wave right here. Let's go back into the 15-minute chart and see what we can see there. Okay, see if we have any entry points into uh, the market. Now, this, is, uh, this wave is a bit of a conundrum to me because it's just so straight up. Um, I believe we have in this fourth wave a WXY right here. It's a double zigzag, basically. Um, we've got a zigzag ABC followed by an X wave, and then we got an ABC again. Uh, so that looks like a clear WXY for the four. Uh, this looks like a, just a one wave uh, right here followed by a two wave. Now, the question is, is that two wave done? So uh, here are the potentials for the trades, okay? Number one, um, let's kind of zoom in. If that's the case, this is, we're making the fifth wave, and we got a one-two working right here. Uh, so the question mark is for trading today and tomorrow and tonight is that is this one? I think it is. Come on. Yeah, there it is. And is that the bottom of two? We got structure right here that helps us. That could be the bottom of two. Uh, the, and then we go up for three, four, and and five, something like that. Um, of course, of course, three will be higher, four will be higher, and five will be higher. And that would take us up to finish uh, the third wave, the fifth wave of the third wave. Okay, uh, so. So yeah, is that so? How is this wave going to look? Well, let's let's take it back out to the thirty minutes so we can get a little bit more view here. Um, let's see what that looked like. I'm going to get rid of the sub count right there. All right. So depending on where we come down here, um, this might be ABC and it's complete. And if it is, then let's look at that as a potential one. Uh, we've got the three wave coming up here to the one two seven six at fifty six one fifty uh, at one fifty six. That seems too high. Seems like we need to come down a little lower uh, down here to retrace. Uh, if we that seems a little bit more likely of a subdivision of a wave count. Um, that means we would have something like this one. Two, three, four, and five. All right there. Let me just throw the wave on it so you can see it. Let's change the color to pink. And uh, I'm about as small as I can get right now. So that might be the case. It might be done here. Uh, so, but I, I'm feeling like it might not be. Um, so, what would that look like then, um, if that's the case? Well, uh, if it's if it's done, then we go up from here. And uh, we should be in uh, in the market now. How do you know if it's done? Well, if it breaks the if it breaks the high, um, this is what you need to be looking for. So if price from here goes up and breaks this high, uh, this two wave is done most likely. Um, and so we've got a one, two, and we're going up for three, four, five, most likely. But we'll know more when we get more information. And if if it breaks this high, we're going up. But if it comes here and breaks this low right down here, uh, then we're going down to finish this too. And our target will be uh, will be a retracement of this wave. Um, we do have some structure right here. It's good structure there as a target line. Let's see if that lines up with a with a Fibonacci retrace. Uh, here would be a retrace. That lines directly up with the 786, that structure line. So that's a good play. It's a good landing point for the for the two wave. So I'm kind of looking for this cut to come down to uh, uh, 129, uh, 129 to 130 in that ballpark. 129, 130 is my call there for the two wave. If it comes down, if it breaks up, well, we're going up. Jump in. That's a third wave. It's going to shoot up. Okay, um, most likely if it breaks that high, and we'll be watching this high to be broken as well. Always try to get in on a retrace wave if you can. Okay, so um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for for a macro count. We could be coming down here. So whether whether I whether we're coming down here or not, or just going up from here, um, that's a big question mark. But that's what we're looking at. So let's let's just dive in right here a little bit more a uh, little bit more in detail. Look, 
uh, and, and see if we can see anything in there. Uh, let's throw some fibs on it and see if we can see and get, uh, is there any clue as to what it might be doing? Okay. There you go. All right. So we've got, it, this looks like a one, two, three, uh, then, uh, then an X wave. And then, then it looks like we've got a, um, or actually, one, two, three, four, five, five waves. Then we got a B, and then we got a C. So it looks like we got an A, B, C. Uh, could be a W, X, Y. Not sure how to count that the best way, but uh, it's definitely a correction that it's finished. Now the question is, uh, what we have is a lot of overlapping waves right here. When I throw the fibs on this guy, uh, by the way, when I throw the fibs on this, you can see where we come down to. Uh, well, if I can throw the fibs on it. When I throw the fibs on that guy, you can see that it comes down here to the wicks down to the 1276 um, or the 1272, uh, wherever you like. I, I was 276, but uh, 272 is the real number. Um, so, yeah, it's wicked down there. It landed here at the 1 to 1 extension. So, that's a good corrective level. Um, so, that's corrective. That means we should be going up uh, unless we're doing a larger correction, which is an A, B, and a C coming down here first. Um, so that's a potential we got to be aware of. So this might be an A. We might have made a B right there, and now we're going down for a C. So this could be a B wave, and now we're coming down for a C. C wave down to that 129 target, 130 target. Um, when I throw the fibs on this, here's the bottom, the top of the wave, the bottom of the first wave there. You can see that we came up to the 1276 and tagged it, and then we bounced off. Okay, so uh, that's very corrective. We did not break this low in this last bounce there down to the bottom. Uh, so we, are we going to start coming down here on this wave uh, or are we going to go up from here? So uh, there is a potential that we go up a little higher to finish this. This could be an A, B, and a C come up here. And then we're going to come down for that C wave. So that would basically be, uh, let me zoom out just a hair on the 20 minute there we go so that correction would look something so the correction could be something like this a could be b and c coming down to that 129 mark before we before we go up uh, that's a possibility uh, I want you to know some other possibilities here um, we've got a b c and it's done and we've made a one, two, we're going up for three, and it's done. So that's a possibility as well. Um, let me show you one more possibility. Uh, this could be, I don't want that. A, come on. A, that could be B, could be coming down for C. So, are we done with this correction? I don't know. Is this target down here? If we break this low, if we break this point right here, um, if we break this uh, 133 mark, um, then we're coming down here probably to the 129 to 130 region, most likely. Uh, that's my target, okay? Uh, if we break this high up here, uh, from this area right now, if we break the 139, uh, 140 mark, and we're probably going up uh, to our upper targets in the 155 range. Okay, that's what we're looking at. Uh, so be watching that. I'll keep us updated in the Litecoin Swing Trading community as well. But we just really have to watch price action here. What are we going to be doing here? Is it coming down to break this target? Uh, so our watch lines are, again, just to remind you, 133 and 140. Uh, so those are our, and that's how we're going to validate or invalidate a particular count that we have going on. So because we have three different options on the table, we might come up for another high, but if we don't break it, we might come down here to 129. Now what what BTC do, is doing might help us out. This appears to me like it's a finished correction. It looks like it's an A, a B, and a C. Uh, or C is going to finish here uh, at the one to one extension here very soon uh, at 88.23. It could come down to 86.79, uh, but this is looking close to finished um, as an ABC. So be mindful of what uh, Bitcoin is doing. And then once this ABC is done, it's going to be going up for higher targets. Most likely, uh, we're probably coming up here to the $9,500 mark uh, between 95 and 10,000.
So 95 is uh, going to be our target next, uh, and then we'll see what price does at $9,500. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at. I um, hope that helps you. Now, let me talk about what I mean when I say we don't FOMO in, and I want to be really clear, okay? Uh, when I say we don't FOMO in, that you know, some of you have, uh, I think, mentioned that you're out since 120s, uh, and, and you've missed all this move up. When I, you know, when I say don't FOMO in, I'm not saying don't you can't get back in or you can't trade. But up to this point, you know, the the, the chart has been very difficult, but it's given this more, this more information, and uh, it's looking looking fairly bullish. That doesn't mean there's not a bear count, guys, and and we could be going down from here. You got to always remember that. This is why we uh, we trade with stop losses. Okay, it's the middle of the afternoon. I'm still yawning. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, so we're going to trade with stop losses. But when I say don't FOMO in, what I mean is if you miss your entry, uh, for instance, say say price came down here and you missed your entry, and then and by by the time you realize price is running away from you, price is all the way up here. Uh, this is where I do not enter a, a trade. I do not FOMO in there. Uh, you say, well, Jim, if you had, you would have made some money because look, it went up and it went up. That's right, and and you can do that. But here's my problem with that. Uh, when the, when the market's being made, you don't know what this is going to do. You don't know that this isn't going to just turn around on you. You didn't know this. And so I make it a point in my discipline as the, as the market is moving, I don't FOMO in on this wave. I wait for a pullback, and then we go in. Okay, so we wait for a pullback that doesn't break the low. If our pullback does not break this low, uh, then we have a good, uh, as long as we've got signs of a reversal, we've got a good entry point. So we, uh, we I try to get in on the bottom of waves, okay? So uh, this last move, I've actually entered long already on, on, on this one because this hit the one-to-one -one extension or the 1276. I can't remember what it was, but uh, I've already entered uh, this and I'm waiting for it to go up, but I am ready. I'm ready for it. If price comes back down to retest this level and starts to break it, I've got a stop loss, but look how close my stop is. My stop is just under this line because if it breaks, it's probably coming down to here. I can stop that out without much loss and then re-enter at a better entry point at, you know, three or four dollars cheaper uh and, and that translates to several hundred dollars potentially depending on how much you're trading uh it might be uh it just depends on what your what your trading account is and what you're what you're buying and selling so you got to understand uh the other the other options you can just wait that out you could put your stop down here but i like to put tight stops okay so what i try to do is get in at the bottom of a wave okay so I try to get in as close to the bottom as I can, and my stop goes right underneath the last low. If price comes down and breaks that last low, most likely it's going to go down for a deeper retrace. And so you have to be aware of those things. And so basically, if I would have, if I got in here and I did, okay, uh, I got if I got in, I try to get in here in the first couple of dollars, and then my stop, uh, my stop goes. Um, let me draw a box here. My stop goes right right underneath of it. Okay in this in this region so as price came down you know uh, as price came down I could choose uh, to see what price action is doing and wait this out or I can I can get out for a very minimal loss and then re-enter at a better target now again I wouldn't have known it was only coming down a little bit more here I, again we're playing what the market gives us we don't always know what the market's gonna do because there's gonna be a day guys where it, it just flies away on you uh, it's gonna go down and it's gonna be so big you're gonna be so surprised that big dip is coming uh, we just don't want to be in the market when it does this is why I get out at the top of waves if I can or somewhere close to the top of waves and I want to see what this correction begins to look like does it begin to look huge or does it look smallish and so we we weigh these things so when I say don't FOMO in I just mean don't get in at the top here wait for a pullback you want to trade this up fine do it uh, wait for a pullback get in here uh, if we're expecting a push up okay so I'm just constantly want to preach to you get in at the bottom of ways at the bottom of these long candles these long wicks these long pushes you got this big push Get in here, trade that. Get in here, trade that. Get in here, trade that. Okay, this is what we're thinking. This is the way you need to be thinking. But I don't mean stay out of the market forever. Okay, uh, remember, as long as you get in at the bottom of a wave, your stop is just below your entry point. So you're not. It's really not a high risk, and you got a potential for some reward. And you're not going to miss these moves, and you can still trade them. So keep that in mind as you're trading this market, even in the bear market. As as we move into the large correction that's coming, you're going to see a big move to the downside. But you'll be able to trade uh, to trade the 
the retraces and you'll be able to make money on the way down you just have to be disciplined to get in at the bottom and if you miss the bottom you just you just don't get in you don't FOMO in you wait until the next one down and you try to catch the next one okay uh, I'm gonna show you in future videos how to set alerts on TradingView uh, just right now as I'm thinking about it, just right click click add alert and you can set the uh, you can set it for where you want it so when you're looking for price to say you were looking for price to, to come to co to come down here to this region say you wicked this off right here you say hey here's a level right here that I want to be aware of so when price cross or even right here so when price crosses this line what you can do is right click on that line click add alert on the horizontal line and then click create and it'll tell you when price crosses that line um, and so uh, you can know when to get in. You can, it can alert you on your phone when to get in that market. Okay. All right. There's our video. There's our count. I'm looking for some uh, targets up up to the upside towards 155. Uh, that's the top of the three wave. Then we should be coming down for the four wave. Might be retracing down to the 120-ish level. So uh, and then going up for the fifth wave. Uh, up to the 180 mark so that's a potential uh, that could be totally wrong I want you to be aware of that I did, let me say it again that could be totally wrong I want you to be aware of it but that's how I'm interpreting the market with the information that I have so far alright guys I gotta go that's a long video hope you can wade through that I hope you enjoyed it uh, you guys have a fantastic Sunday uh, the rest of your day bye bye